The Two Churches, a tale of rigorous ruptures and novel freedoms. There is a parable, or so it goes, of a grand old bank, a place where treasure had been kept for centuries, entrusted from generation to generation. The bankers of old handled their charge with trembling hands, for they knew their wealth was not theirs, but held in trust for the townsfolk who, rich or poor, depended on it. The gold within was ancient, as much a part of the people as the stones in the village square. The bankers did not invent the treasure, they merely safeguarded it, protectors of the timeless. Yet, one day, new bankers arrived. They carried with them clever smiles and new philosophies. They eyed the treasure, not with reverence, but with a certain cavalier curiosity. Why should we hoard what the world demands we spend? They whispered to one another, and in the darkened vaults their whispers grew bolder. They began to believe they could, with deft hands and soft words, rebrand the wealth as theirs, to hide its origin, and eventually to distribute it as they saw fit. A bit here, a bit there, never too much, never too little, lest the townsfolk grow suspicious. They would mint new coins, glittering and bright, a fresh currency that bore none of the old marks or symbols, none of the weighty legacy. And so the vaults were opened, not to the poor who sought a glimpse of their heritage, but to the modern world that demanded novelty over antiquity, currency over gold. The bankers, in their cleverness, hoped that if they emptied the vault with enough flair, no one would notice the treasure itself was gone. And as the coins flowed out, some began to wonder if the vaults had ever held anything at all. The irony, of course, is that the new bankers despise those they deem the rigorists, the townsfolk who come knocking at the vault door, pleading for a glimpse of the ancient gold. The rigorists are accused of clinging to memories, of lacking imagination, of refusing to join the revelry of novelty. Yet these townsfolk, though they are painted as rigid, hold in their hearts the same strange paradox that has always animated the town. That what is ancient is also new. That tradition does not merely look backward, but speaks across ages, with a voice that defies time itself. But here lies the crux of the paradox. For the new bankers, the old gold, the unchangeable treasure, is a kind of heresy. They would have us believe in two banks, two economies, one of open, novel currency, and another they dismiss as a rigorous relic, outmoded and in need of silencing. They accuse the townsfolk of creating division, of fostering schism, even as they lock the door to the vault and hide the keys. They whisper that only the new coins are truly valuable, that the golden treasure must stay hidden for the good of the people. Yet the people in their souls sense the treasure's absence. They wander the streets with empty pockets, holding only the bright, hollow coins that promise much but carry no weight. They know that something essential is missing. They feel in their bones that the great paradox of the old faith, that one might find the eternal in the mundane, that the divine might dwell in bread and wine, is slipping away. For there is no weight in this new currency, no link to the timeless, only the shifting winds of modernity, forever changing, forever elusive. And here is the beautiful, tragic irony. The new bankers, who pride themselves on innovation, are the true revolutionaries, tearing down the vault and scattering the gold without knowing its value. Meanwhile, those they label as rigorists, those who would cling to the ancient and the eternal, are the only ones keeping the paradox alive. They hold fast to a faith that refuses to fit neatly into categories, a faith that is both rigorous and liberating, demanding and merciful, ancient and ever new. But what can they do in the face of locked doors and clever whispers? What can they do but continue to knock, to cry out for the treasure that was entrusted, not for the bankers, but for the people?
and perhaps that is the final paradox, the one the new bankers cannot see, that in guarding the treasure with reverent rigour, one might, after all, open the door to true freedom.